Let's mm. grow some rocks. Specifically, let's grow some crystals in a super saturated solution. Welcome to Destructive Creativity, where we make cool science and explain why it works. But first, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. It's the only way. We have everything we need to make some really cool crystals today. So let's get going. But first, put on your safety glasses. Safety is number one priority. Growing a crystal properly takes a long time. So we'll be starting today and then we'll show you the result of a crystal that's been growing for eight weeks. We'll also show you the cheaters method where you can grow large crystal formations in random patterns in a very short amount of time. Let's get everything ready. We are going to be making a single gigantic alum crystal. And then selling it online for our own personal fortune. Yeah. Nope. I don't think so. Sad. We will be needing some hot distilled water. And alum. Technically, this is potassium aluminum sulfate. We picked it up at a grocery store. I think it's used for pickling or something like That's that. That's right. Just make sure that it is potassium aluminum sulfate and not potassium aluminum phosphate. They pretty much are the same thing, but the sulfate works better. Fill a heat resistant cup with some water and microwave it for 20 seconds. Don't put in too much water because we're gonna be mixing in a lot of aluminum potassium sulfate later. So the more water you start with, the more you'll have to mix in. When the water is hot, start mixing in some alum one tablespoon at a time. Stir each spoonful until it is dissolved. Keep adding alum until no more will mix in. Once you're sure that no more alum can dissolve in the water, strain it through a coffee filter to make sure that you don't have any stray crystals left over. Let's be cool and use a scientific beaker instead of a cup. I hate to break it to you, but being cool is not a requirement of science. On the contrary, science automatically adds a factor of 14 coolness to your face instantaneously. How on earth are you married? <laughs> Bait and switch, boys. <laughs> Bait and switch. <laughs> Back on topic. After you have the saturated solution, put it away overnight so the seed crystals can grow. Wow! Did you feel that? We've been standing here for the past 25 hours! Don't tell lies. Well, time flies when you're having fun, or relatively if you're standing near a massive body of matter. Actually, here is one that we prepared yesterday. If we pour it out, you can see that tiny crystals have formed. I'm just going to strain it using a coffee filter again, because uh, you'll want to keep that liquid for later. We'll just let that drain through. We want to pick out the biggest and best seed crystal that we can find. The better the seed, the better the end result. There. Well, that's those are pretty. Cool. Okay, we need to just dry those off a little bit. We're going to tie a bit of fishing line around the seed so that it can hang nicely. If I can do it. I like this one. Cut the excess off so it's just hanging. Now we're going to have to suspend this somehow in the liquid that we saved from earlier. We're going to use a pencil. This is the hard part because you're going to have to measure so that the seed will be able to hang in the solution without touching the bottom. Grab it like that. Yeah. Ta -da. <laughs> Make sure you place a paper towel over top of the solution so no dust gets in. This is the part that usually takes a while, but luckily we have one we started a long time ago. Now when I started this crystal eight weeks ago, I would come back and check it every seven days to see if there were smaller crystals growing on the sides or bottom of the container. If we did see smaller crystals start to grow, then we would switch the larger crystal out to a new container. We would pour the existing liquid through a coffee filter just to make sure that the alum couldn't grow on anywhere except for the bigger crystal. And around every two weeks, the water evaporated enough that we had to make up a new batch of 
the alum saturated solution. But if you do switch over to the crystal to a new batch of solution, make sure the liquid is room temperature. Because even if it's a little bit warm, you could dissolve your big crystal back into the solution and that would be heartbreaking. Let's pull it out. Okay, here we go. Eight weeks worth of growing. Wow. That's cool. Okay, I'm just gonna dry it off. Okay, that's super cool. That is cool. That's huge. Look at that, eh? So this is actually fairly delicate. If I were to squeeze it really hard, I would probably break some of the corners off. So in order to preserve this better, we're gonna dry it off and we're gonna coat it with some clear nail polish finish stuff. I don't know what the girls call it these days. While we take a look at that crystal in a bit more detail, I'll explain to you why it grows. All crystal making begins with a saturated solution. This is simply a solution that cannot hold any more of the material. For example, if you are making a saturated solution of alum water, you would add alum to the water until no more could be dissolved. And it doesn't have to be alum. It could be any material from laundry detergent to salt. Eventually, the alum will start collecting on the bottom of the container because the water cannot hold any more of the material. Crystals grow when the solution becomes super saturated, meaning that there is too much of the material dissolved in the water. The extra alum, or other material, takes the form of crystals. To get a super saturated solution, you can either cool down the solution, thus decreasing the amount that the water can hold, or let some of the water evaporate. Very cool. If you want an even bigger crystal, just leave it in the solution and keep changing the water for as long as you want. The longer you leave it, the bigger it will get. Okay, so I mentioned that there is a cheater's method for large masses of crystals. Let's start out with about 50 milliliters of water. If we bring this to a near boil, we can mix in almost 100 grams of aluminum sulfate. The way this works is using a solubility curve. Essentially, the hotter a liquid is, the more alum can be dissolved in it. So if we heat the water up and boil it, we can dissolve a huge amount into it. And when it cools, the entire container will be crystallized before your eyes in a matter of hours. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned because bloopers are coming up. If you have any questions, let us know down in the comments and boop that like button if you can find it. Boop. Stop. I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> Does silica make good crystals? Of quartz it does. <laughs> Send me in couch, I'm ready. <laughs> Ah! Why is your jacket so small? <laughs> Do you know why I hate people that work with minerals? Because they always take everything for granted. <laughs>